Now that Senator Joe Manchin um, has effectively killed the Build Back Better Act with his uh, voicing that he's absolutely a no on it. Um, there's some Republicans that are very happy with him, which we all have seen before. But now they're wondering, maybe he may want to just join us fully, take off the mask and let us know you really want to join the party. So uh, let's jump right into this from the New York Times as they're seeing a couple senators are seeking Senator Joe Manchin. So uh, it is hardly a secret that uh, Mr. McConnell said that uh, he has showed that he has wooed Mr. Manchin for years, only to have Mr. Manchin, a lifelong Democrat, resist. And Mr. Manchin this week said he had hoped there was still a place for him in the party. <clears throat> McConnell went on to say, obviously we would love to have him on our team. I think he'd be more comfortable. First of all, maybe he would. I mean, so I, I, I can't deny that potential reality. Um, but so the first thought comes straight to, hey, he's been helping us this much. But my, my approach to that is, he probably helps you better as a Democrat. He still passes as a Democrat for many people and many voters. Um, he still fools certain Democratic, uh, uh, the White House specifically, but other Democratic senators and maybe a couple of House members into thinking that he has the best interests of the Democratic Party, of the American people in, at heart, because there's the D behind his name. That helps him fly under the cover <laughs> and continue to do what he was doing. But um, let's continue on with some of these quotes from uh, the Mitch McConnell interview uh, where he was talking with the New York Times. Uh, Mr. McConnell said that applying pressure to keep the policy bill separate from the infrastructure measure denied Democratic leaders leverage over Mr. Manchin, who helped negotiate the infrastructure measure while delivering a bipartisan bill that met legitimate needs. He said that Mr. Trump and other Republican critics uh, had been proven wrong. Um, so this is, again, this is Mitch McConnell. He's saying the things that many people who saw this coming were saying. Um, so if you don't want to believe made progressives because they're wild and they're radical and all they want to do is cause trouble and destroy their caucuses. Um, here's the guy who's saying straight up who wanted Mitch, uh, I'm sorry, Joe Manchin to do what Joe Manchin did. And he said, well, it was great that they separated the two bills because that made it easier for me to win. So again, if we're gonna keep talking about who was at fault here, and let's talk about other Democrats, or let's talk about how many, how 50 Republicans actually oppose this as well. He's saying how the strategy that Joe Manchin pulled off worked well for him. I'm gonna let you in in one second, uh, David. I'm gonna go through these last two thoughts that 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 the, that the uh, New York Times had regarding Mitch McConnell's approach. I think it's a much smarter play to support the infrastructure bill. I think it was a good for the country and B, smart for us politically, Mitch McConnell said, smart for us politically. When it's politically, who is it about? It's partisan and it's based off Mitch McConnell, who's a Republican. Lastly, Kirsten Sinema has been quite an, uh, unequivocal that she is not going to break the Senate and eliminate the legislative filibuster. Thank goodness for that. So I guess uh, Kirsten Sinema is next on the list, uh, David, with the people they need. Well, a lot there, first of all, um, you know, I think Democrats may want to have Joe Manchin join the Republican Party and be their headache. Because the last time I checked, Joe Manchin had said one of the things that he did want in the Build Back Better bill was to increase taxes on the rich. Republicans hate that. Uh, Joe Manchin also supported uh, universal pre-K. Republicans opposed that. There was an issue with the child tax credit that uh, which was became the key, key stumbling block between Manchin and the Democrats. Um, but Joe Manchin is, would be very much of a moderate, a centrist sort of Republican. And as we've seen, uh, those sorts of Republicans don't last very long these days or they get primary. So yeah, Manchin is a pain and you know what to Democrats, he would also be one to Republicans. And I think this is just, this is just Republicans trolling Democrats and sort of uh, spiking the ball in the end zone because Democrats have failed to get uh, the bill through. Um, but I'm not so sure it's necessarily the end of it. I think there's a possible possibility that this gets passed in parts, that this gets broken up or that the new negotiations start anew in January. But yeah, Joe Manchin is, um, He's a problem for Democrats, and and I think that's been a problem that we've talked about all along. Democrats, yes, they've got 48 supporters of their agenda. Then they've got Cinema and Manchin, who technically give them the majority with Kamala Harris as the tiebreaker. But it's not as if they've been able to get things like, you know, the $15 minimum wage or climate change or anything else that just that that is really on the Democrats' agenda with those two. So it's sort of like he's in no man's land. He doesn't help Democrats. I'm not so sure that Manchin would help Republicans. Well, there's the thing, and if he did make the switch, as you point out, he'd have to show so much fealty to Donald Trump and the rest of the party, the way that some of them had have had to do publicly. Especially if you're a new Republican that's formerly this prominent Democrat that's gotten all this attention. There's no way you can go in and have these fights with them and not just fall in line. I remember when President Trump was still in office and Joe Biden had a little bit of a, not Joe Biden, Joe Manchin had a bit of a dust up with him. 
And he kind of seeded and like said, well, you know, I mean, I, I, I pushed and I vote against you and all that. But then after it was all said and done, it was just kind of a, yeah, you're the president, I'm gonna go ahead and lay back. And so if you're definitely within the party, you're, you're not really gonna get much further than that. You're definitely not gonna push back, especially if Donald Trump makes his return or if he has a spawn of himself in the form of Ron DeSantis to do the same things that he was doing. Um, so I don't know, it's maybe not that helpful. But I do agree with your point about they're potentially just trolling, but with maybe a 10% wink of maybe. But I, you know, it, they, 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 yeah, no, I, I like, I think Republicans would love to have Joe Manchin who sort of marches in lockstep with everything Republicans do. I, I think in practice, they would realize that that's not so. That's so nice. That's not so nice for them. So they sort of like the idea more than they like it in reality. But you mentioned a pushback, and and I think that's a great sort of term because Democrats are trying to figure, well, how can we push back against Joe Manchin, and how can we push back against the Republicans? I have a feeling Democrats would have an easier time uh, defeating a Republican incumbent who's up for reelection in 2022, 2024. And there are a couple of them that are vulnerable. They'll have an easier time of beating that Republican and taking the seat, making a Democrat, than they will of either moving Joe Manchin to the left or primarying Joe Manchin and having any success against him in West Virginia. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunities to marginalize Joe Manchin in the year, two years ahead. And I think that's the best way to show your hatred of Joe Manchin is to make him irrelevant. Well, they're working on it. Well, John Corn also joined in on it before we jump to something else. John Cornyn was the second Republican that decided to point out again publicly how he reached out to Joe Manchin. So from the insider, Senator John Cornyn said he texted Joe, uh, Joe Manchin, inviting him to join the Republican Party after the Democratic faced a furious backlash for his opposition to Joe Biden's signature domestic bill. Uh, Cornyn, who's from Texas, told uh, KXAN that he texted him, as we know, as a West Virginia Democrat, Joe uh, Manchin, and said, Joe, if they don't want you, we do. And Cornyn added that recruiting Manchin would join uh, to join the GOP would be the quote greatest Christmas gift I can think of. See, it's lines like that that act, I think give a lot of credit to what your point about the trolling. Oh, it's a Christmas gift. If you want to join us, we will. And he's going to tell everybody about the text messages. Um, have you heard about any of the rest of uh, John Cornyn's text messages with other colleagues? Have you heard about maybe his messaging on January 6th? Have you heard about what he thinks about Donald Trump for real? Have you heard about what he thinks probably about Mitch McConnell for real? No. He, we know this text exchange with Joe Manchin because he wanted us to know about this text exchange with Joe Manchin. Yeah, oh, and I guarantee, I guarantee Chuck Schumer and the Democrats have had those similar conversations with Republican moderates like Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins through the years. But to your point, um, for strategic reasons and maybe to protect Collins and Murkowski in the relationship, yeah. Schumer hasn't gone forward, hasn't gone public and said, "Oh yeah, here are my text messages saying that I tried to woo her and congratulate her, and Republicans don't like you, so come join the Democratic Party." In this case, Cornyn probably realizes this is a bunch of bunk. There's no way that Manchin's really going to come forward. So why not put it out there, have some fun, make the Democrats go crazy? And certainly, some of them are at this uh, trolling or this sort of making fun of the Democrats not getting things done, or and again, keeping the story going that Joe Manchin cannot be trusted among Democrats and Cornyn and McConnell are piling on that and reinforcing the point and saying to Democrats, "Oh yeah, don't trust him because we're gonna try to get him. My last thought here is I just wonder though, like it's a good trolling exercise. It's what Republicans like to do. It's part of their agenda each each term is to just troll. Um, but I wonder though, because with this type of thing, well, we have many progressives and maybe even some Democrats that are kind of fed up with uh, Joe Manchin and his his process here as far as Build Back Better and also the infrastructure package. Um, but when you have Republicans start saying, hey, he's a good Republican like us, maybe some of the people who still had the misconception that Joe Manchin is working for the American people or, or even as, as small as helping out Joe Biden with his agenda, that might spark a lot of Democratic voters thoughts to say, wait, Republicans love him. Well, maybe they didn't hear progressives say that, hey, Republicans love him. <laughs> so maybe them saying it might convince um, those folks that are potentially not understanding what's happening here. Uh, that is, that's such a, such a great, uh, great uh, point that you make. And that is, yeah, I mean, look at who Joe Manchin is getting flowers from these days. And then tell us, do you really trust Joe Manchin to carry out any part of the Democratic agenda? Of course not. Democratic. I mean, Joe Manchin is as in bed with corporate interests as any senator in either party. So in that sense, yeah, he fits right into a lot of what Republicans are doing, particularly regarding oil and gas and coal interests. 
But Joe Manchin does have some issues that he seems to care about that I think would be a thorn in the side of Republicans if rubber were ever hit the road in terms of a bill Republicans are putting together. So fun and games for the Republicans. And I'm sure Joe Manchin is appreciating the opportunity to say to Democrats, hey, you know, they're wooing me out there. So maybe you need to be a little bit nicer because clearly Joe Manchin got his feelings hurt, which is one of the reasons that he decided not to support this bill. Uh, and he's able to say, I'm justified in having my feelings hurt. And they care about my feelings over in the GOP. No, they don't. They don't care about you, Joe Manchin. They just want to derail Democrats. He has to know that. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.